all things that are supernatural scares us. And yet, we also have a deep fascination with them. It's always interesting to hear about sightings of ghosts and eerie apparitions in macabre locations, like haunted houses, abandoned asylums, or even ghost towns. Spooky stories come to be because of someone else's misery or tragic end. Some might argue that these gruesome tales are a sensationalization of what truly happened, and they're not wrong in that aspect. But these stories are also the key to revealing the true histories of these places. In this video, we're going to be talking about places that are not for the faint of heart. So here are five of the scariest places you shouldn't visit. Luang Sewu. Sometimes, the atrocities of war and strife are more horrific than the supernatural tales surrounding a place. This is Luang Sewu, a building with a complicated history. Luang Sewu was the grand building that housed the headquarters of the Dutch East Indies Railway Company during Dutch colonial rule in Indonesia. But in World War II, Luang Sewu bore witness to a terrible event. Japanese forces turned the basement in one of Luang Sewu's buildings into a prison and imprisoned many Dutch colonials. There were reports of them being tortured and killed. It's even said that sometimes Japanese soldiers would decapitate prisoners and toss their heads to the corner of the basement. But things don't end there. Another conflict came after World War II when Dutch colonials snuck back to Luang Sewu using underground tunnels. There came a five-day battle that resulted in the death of many Indonesians and railway workers. After that, Luang Sewu fell into disrepair. The stagnation apparently attracted even more restless spirits. Today, Luang Sewu remains an iconic landmark in Indonesia but rumors of its ghostly inhabitants persist, with the story even getting turned into a film. Poveglia Island Italy seems to have a fondness for eerie islands, and Poveglia Island is said to be the most haunted of them all. This is a place you shouldn't visit, not just because it's haunted, but because it's also closed to the public. The history of Poveglia Island started off normal. In 2200 BCE, Proto-Italians arrived there to settle down. In 421 AD, it was declared a sanctuary for those that were fleeing barbarian invasions. During the Middle Ages, the island once again became a safe haven, but this time only for those who had the plague. It served as a quarantine area for plague-stricken Venetians and as a dumping ground for their bodies when they succumbed. Even those with mild symptoms weren't safe. They were quarantined along with the severely ill patients for 40 days. Most of them have died. By the time the plague started to decline, experts estimated that there were at least 100,000 bodies buried in mass graves on the island. Up until the 19th century, Paveglia Island served as a quarantine area for passing ships until its hospital was shut down. But its association with disease and illness would only grow stronger. Come the 20th century, and the government built a psychiatric hospital for the mentally ill. With the treatment for mental illnesses during that time, like lobotomies, Stories about horrific experiments and treatments of patients flourished. There was even the tale of a doctor who jumped from the island's bell tower because he was haunted by his patients. Whether it truly happened or not, it's a bit lost to history, but some have claimed to hear the bell from the tower even though it was removed decades ago. If you ever find yourself in Italy, this seems like a good place to stop by, but tell us. Are you brave enough to? Geola Island 
So here's a picturesque island in Nepal with a private villa where you can lounge freely. But be warned, this island is beautiful but deadly with a curse to boot. Gayola Island has a long track record of endowing misfortune to those who own it. Some sources pointing fingers at a local figure called Imago, or the wizard, who is a solitary hermit that disappears suddenly one day. After that, the rest is history. The island was then owned by a man named Luigi Nigri, who constructed the villa you can see to this day. But shortly after, his fishing company went bankrupt. More catastrophes followed the next owners. One such is Hans Braun, who was murdered with his corpse wrapped up in a carpet. The string of deaths wasn't enough to dissuade more high profile figures from buying the island, and they paid dearly because of it. Enter Gianni Agnelli, the principal shareholder of Fiat. Gianni wasn't affected personally, but his loved ones were. At the age of 33, Gianni's only son committed suicide by jumping off a bridge. Some would argue that his son's death would be due to the pressure of the family name. But more mystic ones would say it was due to the curse. Up next was the oral magnate, John Paul Getty. While known for his flourishing business practices, Getty was more notorious for being a cheapskate. Refusing to pay his grandson's ransom money and lending his son the ransom money at 4% interest. He also has some heavy tragedies in his family, apart from his grandson getting kidnapped by the Italian crime syndicate. His oldest son committed suicide and his youngest son died at an early age. The island's last owner ended up in prison and his wife died in the car accident. But here's one more for you. While the island has been completely abandoned, the owners of a villa next to Gayola Island were murdered in 2009. Now we could argue that these series of unfortunate deaths are just the results of freak coincidences over the years, but we could also consider that it is possibly cursed. What do you think? Helltown, Ohio. Helltown is a place that lives up to its name, both in the past and the present. It's a ghost town, and some theories behind this is that the town was evacuated because its inhabitants were devil worshippers, or because of toxic waste mutating the people. Some of these rumors are mostly false, but they do have some truth to them. There was indeed a church with upside down crosses called the Mother of Sorrows. You might have seen upside down crosses in horror films, but in truth, they are a symbol of St. Peter. The Mother of Sorrows is also just one of the many names of the Virgin Mary. But what about the toxic waste part? This one is also true, minus the mutated people. There is a public report about chemical contaminations in the area coming from the Craky Dump, although it was fully cleaned up in 2015. Now let's go to the bloody history of Helltown. Time after time, history tells us how much colonizers cheated and conned Native Americans. Helltown came to be because Native Americans were forced out of their homelands into Ohio, the state of Helltown. The Native Americans were the ones who named it Helltown, with Hell being the German word for clear. Decades later, this would be followed by another tragic event in Ohio. The Moravian Massacre, of which Helltown was used as a war trial. The Moravian Massacre refers to the killing of 96 Moravian Christian Native Americans, or Moravian Muncie, by American militiamen led by David Williamson. The Moravian Muncie were pacifists during the Revolutionary War which the Pennsylvania militia viewed with suspicion. The soldiers led them to Natanhutton with the promise of evacuation, but instead massacred them. There are so many graphic details to this event that we can't mention them here, but what makes it sadder is that the Moravian Muncie prayed all throughout before, 
and even during their execution. But still, the soldiers killed everyone regardless of age and gender, then scalped them, leading to almost a hundred deaths. A century after, Helltown's people would also be driven out of their homes after President Bill reclaimed Helltown as land for a national park. One graffiti even read, Now we know how the Indians felt. The Winchester Mansion Imagine inventing something and getting millions from it. Now imagine inventing something and then getting millions but in exchange, thousands of people dying. This is what happened to Oliver Winchester, the inventor of the Winchester rifle. But this story isn't really about Oliver Winchester. It's really about his son, William Wart Winchester, and his wife, Sarah Winchester. Through the success of his rifle, Oliver Winchester built his own company, the Winchester Repeating Arms Company. When he passed away, he passed the company to his son, William, who was married to Sarah. So here's where it gets interesting. William also passed away the next year, so Sarah ended up getting William's inheritance along with half of the shares of the Winchester company. It's not a bad deal if you think about it, but there's a catch. After Sarah became a widow, she moved to California and into a 45 acre ranch. And looking to feel more at home, she started remodeling and expanding her house. Rumors claim that this process kept on going on until the end of her life. The reason for this is that Sarah believed that she was haunted by the victims of the Winchester rifle and that remodeling the house kept spirits lost and unaware of her whereabouts in the manor. This theory does sound plausible and to this day, the Winchester Manor embodies odd architectures with more than 150 bedrooms, 47 fireplaces, and countless staircases that sometimes leads to dead ends or to nowhere. But there is a more pragmatic reason. Sarah's remodeling wasn't always consistent, sometimes taking a break for months at a time. However, she was highly involved in it taking charge of the architecture and planning. But she wasn't a professional, so she did make some odd structural choices. The staircases that lead to nowhere could also be attributed to the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. Some parts of Sarah's home were destroyed and not rebuilt after. Here's something even more heartwarming. Sarah kept expanding her home because her true passion was architecture and to also keep workers employed. Sarah valued those that worked under her, and her employees were named in her will, as well as the community remembering her fondly. So is there truly anything supernatural going on in the mansion? Maybe not, but even so, you should still proceed with caution. One reason not to visit this place is because it becomes scary if you get lost in this labyrinth mansion. In 2018, a horror movie called Winchester was made to dramatize the ghosts that were haunting the Winchesters through the mansion. When it comes to horror stories, it's undeniable that both true and fiction intersect. Sticking to the facts keeps them realistic, but embellishing them adds an element of excitement. Proving whether these accounts are true or false in real life is also a different matter. There are a lot of spiritologists on the internet and TV with their own claims about paranormal experiences, but we can never be too sure if they're just putting on a show. As for you, do you care enough to prove if these stories are real? What scary places have you visited before? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our late night top 5 channel. We're a new channel and would love to have your support by subscribing, liking, or simply dropping a comment down below. To watch more interesting late night videos, click the links to continue watching more.